Would you like to impress your friends with some shocking facts about history's most obvious false prophet? If so, have I got a list for you. YouTube's new and improved, more Sharia-compliant terms of service go into effect today. And what better way to celebrate than by wreaking a little historical havoc on the trust and safety team's favorite pet prophet? There are different kinds of facts about Muhammad. Facts about how dumb he could be, facts about how violent he could be, facts about how deceptive he could be, facts about how incredibly white he was, facts about how many slaves he had, and what he did to the ones with vaginas, and so on. But right now, you're going to learn my top five most disgusting facts about Muhammad. These are things that make you go... Hey, hey, hey. Things that make you go... Am I right or am I right? Things that make you go... I think there should be some sort of reward for people who can make it through all five facts without vomiting. How about bragging rights in the comments section? Side note to the Muslims who are watching, I would love to see you explain fact number one. Just remember, if you get mad, you're not getting mad at me, you're getting mad at the facts, all of which will be proven directly from your most trusted sources. So, defend your prophet, if you're able. Now, four out of the five nauseating facts you're about to ponder are unknown to almost everyone, especially to Muslims. Only one of them is slowly becoming common knowledge. This means that if you share these facts with your Muslim friends, Four out of five of these facts will be almost completely new information to them. I would have liked to have this entire video be unfamiliar facts about Muhammad, but as much as I wanted to shine a light on Muhammad's secret pile of dirty laundry, I couldn't leave one somewhat well-known fact off the list. So let's go ahead and start with the one fact on my list that lots of Muslims and non-Muslims have heard about in the past decade or so. The number five most disgusting fact about Muhammad is Muhammad had sex with a prepubescent nine-year-old girl. We've been through the passages on Muhammad's relationship with Aisha a hundred times, but just in case someone recently arrived here from the Andromeda Galaxy, let's read one. Sahih al-Bukhari, 5133. Narrated Aisha that the Prophet wrote the marriage contract with her when she was six years old, and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old, and then she remained with him for nine years, i.e. till his death. The Muslim sources report that Aisha was playing on a swing when some women came to get her and take her to her husband. She was carrying her dolls as they led her to Muhammad's house, and we know how things must have unfolded once she got to his house. Clearly, he laid her down, took away her dolls, climbed on top of her, and forced his penis inside her. She didn't understand what was happening because no one bothered to tell her about sex. Frightened and confused, she cried because of the pain and bled all over her prophet's bed, but she tried to remain quiet out of respect for her new husband, who, in return, was endangering her life. Muhammad was more than 50 years old when he forced his penis inside his prepubescent nine-year-old child bride. But don't let that keep you from believing that he is, according to Surah 33, verse 21 of the Quran, a beautiful pattern of conduct. Glad we could get that one out of the way. Now for some fun. The number four most disgusting fact about Muhammad. Muhammad encouraged his followers to suck on each other's fingers. Islam is the only religion I'm aware of that promotes finger-sucking. Sahih al-Bukhari, 5456, narrated Ibn Abbas, The Prophet said, When you eat, do not wipe your hands till you have licked it or had it licked by somebody else. Sahih Muslim, 5294, It was narrated that Ibn Abbas said, The Messenger of Allah said, When one of you eats some food, let him not wipe his hand until he has licked it or had it licked. Why did Muhammad want his followers to lick their fingers and to lick each other's fingers? He tells us, Sahih Muslim 5300, 
It was narrated from Jabber that the prophet enjoined licking one's fingers and wiping the plate, and he said, You do not know in which part the blessing is. Muhammad goes through this in other passages. Long story short, Allah hides a blessing somewhere in your food, but you don't know where the blessing is hidden, so you should lick your fingers. If you want someone else to have the blessing, you tell him to lick your fingers. You'll be doing him a favor. You definitely don't want to simply wipe your hands on a napkin because then the blessing will be on the napkin and Satan will steal it. Now, if you don't know much about how germs spread and why it's a bad idea to be sucking on other people's fingers, no worries. I promise you that by the time we get through fact number two and fact number one, you'll understand perfectly why you should never, ever suck on another man's fingers. But before that, we have the number three most disgusting fact about Muhammad, Muhammad swapped spit with little boys. In Bukhari's al adab al-Mufrid, 1183, we read, It is related that Abu Huraira said, I never saw Al-Hassan without my eyes overflowing with tears. That is because the Prophet, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, went out one day and I found him in the mosque. He took my hand and I went along with him. He did not speak to me until we reached the market of Banu Kainuka. He walked around it and looked. Then he left and I left with him until we reached the mosque. He sat down and wrapped himself in his garment. Then he said, where is the little one? Call the little one to me. Hassan came running and jumped into his lap. Then he put his hand in his beard. Then the Prophet, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, opened his mouth and put his tongue in his mouth. Then he said, O oh Allah, I love him. So love him and the one who loves him. According to another hadith, Musnad Ahmed 16,245, Muhammad would suck on the tongues and lips of little boys. But fear not, he also guaranteed that if he sucked on a boy's tongue or lips, that boy's tongue or lips would never be tormented by hellfire. Creepiness factor, one million. Now, if you're wondering whether you should let someone like Muhammad suck on your little boy's tongue, you should probably think carefully about the next fact. The number two most disgusting fact about Muhammad Muhammad would have sex with nine women and girls, but only take one bath. Sahih al-Bukhari, 5068. Narrated Anas, the Prophet used to go round, have sexual relations with all his wives in one night, and he had nine wives. Sahih al-Bukhari, 5215. Narrated Anas bin Malik, the Prophet used to pass by, have sexual relation with all his wives in one night, and at that time he had nine wives. So we're clear on the sex with nine women and girls part, but check out the chapter heading of this hadith. Whoever had sexual intercourse with all his wives and then took one bath only. The Prophet Muhammad, history's greatest man, would have sex with nine women and girls in one night in Medina, the armpit of Arabia, a city with an average high temperature of 109 degrees in the summer but would only take one bath. Can you think of a problem? It's the smell. Back to an earlier point, let me ask the Muslims here. Suppose you were a companion of Muhammad. Think about being in this scenario. One day, your prophet is having one of his sexathons, but he needs a little energy boost between wife number five and wife number six. So he runs to the nearest food stand for some fresh hummus. Keep in mind, he's not taking a bath until he finishes all nine rounds. He starts dipping some pita bread in hummus, but he gets hummus all over his fingers. He turns to you and says, I'd like to give you a blessing. Lick my fingers clean. What do you do? Before you answer, there's one more fact on our list. The number one most disgusting fact about Muhammad, Muhammad was constantly covered in semen. Yeah, I said it, but don't trust me, 
trust his child bride, Aisha. Sahih al-Bukhari, 232, narrated Aisha. I used to wash the semen off the clothes of the Prophet, and even then I used to notice one or more spots on them. Sahih Muslim, 669. It was narrated that Aisha said concerning semen, I used to scratch it from the garment of the Messenger of Allah. Sunan Ibn Majah, 537. It was narrated that Aisha said, I often scraped it, semen, from the garment of the Messenger of Allah with my hand. Aisha, the semen-scraping prepubescent child bride. In Islam, she's called the mother of the faithful. Sahih al-Bukhari, 230. Narrated Suleiman bin Yasser. I asked Aisha about the clothes soiled with semen. She replied, I used to wash it off the clothes of Allah's messenger, and he would go for the salat, prayer, while water spots were still visible. Muslims of the world! Why was your prophet always covered in semen? Let me give you the benefit of the doubt and assume that it was his semen. Why was your prophet always covered in his own semen? Masturbation wasn't allowed, so that wasn't the source of the semen. Coitus interruptus was frowned upon, meaning that he wasn't allowed to pull out of his wives or sex slaves. So where was all of this semen coming from? The most charitable conclusion here, if I'm being very, very generous, is that Muhammad must have used his garment, even the garment he would wear to the mosque, as a rag to wipe off his prophet penis after having sex. That's the nicest conclusion I can draw. Trust me, the other conclusions I can draw are much, much worse. Being as charitable as possible, because I'm a charitable kind of guy, I can only conclude that your prophet would have sex with nine women and girls in a single night, use his own clothes to wipe off his private parts and possibly his wife's private parts after each round, take one bath after the entire nine rounds, and not wash his clothes. Then he would put his clothes on and get ready to head to the mosque. And Aisha, the semen-scratching child bride, would see the semen stains all over him, so she would stop him and try to scratch off or wash off as much as she could. Muhammad would then go to the mosque with wet spots still visible on his clothes. Would you want to be around this guy? Would you want to give him a hug and have his clothes pressing up against yours? Would you want to suck on his fingers? Would you want to suck his fingers clean after lunch? Would you want him sucking on your toddler's tongue? Would you want him marrying your prepubescent daughter? Have you ever met anyone in your entire life who was filthier and more disgusting than Prophet Muhammad? If you're feeling a little nauseous right now, I've got a trick that will make you feel better in just a moment. But before Dr. Wood cures your nausea, be sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications. I'm not on Facebook or Twitter, so please share this video on other platforms. As always, I'm not stingy with my content, so feel free to mirror my videos on your own channels. If you'd like another way to support the channel, you can click the Join button to join the Boom Squad. There are other ways to support in the description box. In the comments, let me know if there are any other disgusting facts about Muhammad that I should have included on this list. If you're a Muslim, be sure to share with us how you reconcile your conviction that Muhammad is a wonderful moral example with the facts I've presented. Facts you're hearing for the first time, because let's face it, your imams don't tell you this stuff. All right, Dr. Wood to the emergency room for a mass outbreak of nausea. What's the remedy for stomach problems? Everyone who's been following my channel all together now. Camel urine. Muhammad's miracle magic cure-all for stomach ills was camel pee. Of course, Muhammad told his followers that if you drank his urine, you'd never have an upset stomach again. Maybe I need to turn this 
into a top 10 list. 